What is going on, everyone? Happy Friday morning. I hope everyone is having an amazing start to their day. Maybe you've got a cup of coffee. Maybe you've got uh, tea. I'm going to go through back to a phase. I go through these phases where I'll stop drinking coffee for like, I don't know, two, like a month or two. And then I always come back to it. But I love iced tea too. So <clears throat> what is going on? All right. Chris Rangel, Irit, Paul, Virag, Thomas, Fired Up Friday. Ooh, I like that one. Fired Up Friday. Hashtag Fired Up Friday. After this, I want all of you to post one of your biggest takeaways. And in honor of Thomas McMillan Jr., I want you to put Fired Up Friday. Just got off this live with Jake Dunlap. It was bonkers. Fired Up Friday. Thank you for that. I'm really, uh, I'm into that. Um, there you go, Mike. Of, Mike, of course you're having tea in the UK. Come on, man. Mike, I hope you're doing great, man. Um, uh, we've got some good fun stuff to catch up on you and me. I uh, had a good conversation with Gemma yesterday. She was great. Um, she's really, really great. So, all right, my friends, if this is your first ever recap you're tuning into, really, this is something that I do. We're doing it live now every Friday, 8.30 a.m. Central, 9.30 Eastern. You do the rest of the math, whatever that means for all of my different friends in different parts of the world, um, where I talk about different learnings from the week. And, and why, why, I guess, like, why, Jake? Like, why would you listen to me? Well, Every week I talk to probably, I don't know, 25 CEOs or sales leaders minimum, right? Plus our clients, plus, you know, five th other things. So what I try to do is summarize everything I've taken away from uh, this week and really distill it into like, you know, I don't know, like five minutes or so. The other question you might have, Jake, do you have a cold or something? No, I do not have a cold. But let me tell you what I tried to do. I tried to wake surf yesterday. Let me tell you. Those guys make it look extremely easy. I don't know if you, any of you have tried wake surfing before, but I have. I didn't. I never skateboarded. I've never snowboarded. I've never done any sport like that ever. I played teams. I played basketball. I, well, I guess track isn't really that. You know, I played those sports. I'm telling you guys, if you haven't tried to wake surf, it is much more difficult than you might think it is. Okay, so anyway, that's why I, I have like eight thousand gallons of uh lake austin water uh in my system right now which is fantastic so all right so this week um uh, i was i had planned to take this week primarily off i did not um i would say this week i had a light schedule um it, which is something that i'm going to start to do i think more often where i was able to write i'm working on our sales process framework called the customer framework happy to share uh, kind of you know some of our learnings there and maybe a different uh, session. Irit also says uh, that yes, wake surfing is is uh, difficult. So I appreciate that. Um, so I took time off to write. Uh, did a whole bunch of other stuff. You know, just like hung out, golfed, did some other things. So it was, it was a pretty light week. But I did have two kind of quick webinars. One was on Monday. Um, I did a uh, on Jake and friends. I basically talked a little bit about how. I went through my career, my different tra like transitions. So look, I would say, and we'll drop the link here um, real quick for everybody. It's uh, if you are early in your career, mid career, late career. I think the session that we did on Monday is a really good example of just all the different ways that your career can be fluid. So if you're you know in a career place, you're feeling a little stuck. Talked about how I got fired. Dude, I talk, I got real real. I talked about how I got fired because I told my boss to fuck off. I also talked about how I got a black eye, like trying to UFC fight somebody like a friend in a hotel lobby at a job. And then I got promoted to leadership. But I, I got real, real about all the dumb shit I did early in my career. So go check that out. And then if you are in customer success or you care about customer success, um, where I did uh, a session yesterday uh, with a team over at Success Hacker. Um, I don't know if we have that link. Maybe what we can do, Shelby, is maybe just tag uh, Aaron Thompson in here, just, uh, at Aaron Thompson. So if you guys don't follow Aaron, Aaron's the, Aaron's the man, he put together a really cool panel. So it was a fun week, uh, back at it next week, you know, pretty much, uh, business as usual. So this week, Jake's take, um, I'm going to talk about this a little bit, a little bit later. I'm going to go in more deep, uh, more, uh, I guess like a deeper explanation of this, but one of the themes from Monday that I talked a lot about is, is never 
being satisfied with the status quo that I've always been, you know, uh, how, how did Jane Dunlap, my mom, my mom used to have a nickname for me. It was called Kaya, which is know it all in retrospect. Like, don't give your kid a nickname like that. Thanks mom. Right. But it's because I always have thought I'm like, no, 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 there's gotta be a better way to do this. No, 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 no. Because in reality, 99 times, 99% of the time, there is a better way to do something. People have just been in the, the machine for so long. They can't even pick their heads up. They can't even pick their heads up and say, uh, Oh yeah, maybe like, you know, I'm not hitting my number. This isn't working. I should do something different. So that's my take for all of you is that just because your boss says to do something, just because people have been doing it that way, doesn't mean you shouldn't be looking for better, more interesting ways to do things. So, all right, this week's in the news. All right. Got a lot of stuff for here, all about LinkedIn. So uh, how many of you, do me a favor, if you've heard, I think, let me see, that. What, what emoji? If you've heard of LinkedIn Elevate, then click the thinking person one. So LinkedIn Elevate is something I, I heard of. I'm just curious how many people even know what the hell I'm talking about with LinkedIn Elevate. Basically what it is, is it's a way for companies to disseminate information, blogs and stuff like that to their employees' LinkedIn, then hopefully getting those employees to their therefore share. Uh, you know me guys, never reshare a post, okay? Never, just don't, just do a straight reshare of the post. Okay, it doesn't work, but you can imagine you can now use Elevate to get a quick, one person has heard of Elevate, literally. I just saw one thinking person go up. So here's what it is. I think it could be a really good tool to disseminate information, but you still need to train your people what to post and how to post, okay? Right, so that's what's up with Elevate. Uh, it's gonna be free, that's the cool part about it. So LinkedIn events is continuing to do updates. They still will not do the only update I give a shit about, which is being able to create reoccurring events. So for me, um, I can't, what do we got up here? The golden, fig. oh, that's LinkedIn Elevate. Okay, cool. All right, there you go. You guys can see some pics of it. Um, they've got some new graphics today. Shelby on the team has pulled these graphics. I'm learning, I'm like, oh my God. Shelby's got all this great stuff planned. I love this. So uh, LinkedIn events. So LinkedIn events has been kind of a waste of space for a long time. Um, now um, <clears throat> it, it's going to, they're trying to create more of a community around the event. It's really for, if you have like one-off events, like on a semi, semi non-regular basis, I think LinkedIn events is great. You can go live from an event now. Uh, you can store videos, custom banners. Um, you can do these like post notifications. So that's pretty cool. So events, I, I'm actually... I think we'll probably try it in August. So you all can tell us how bad it sucks or not. Thomas said that he had dropped Elevate. I think a lot of people had dropped Elevate too for that exact reason. Um, and then finally, LinkedIn has uh, <laughs> a new ad unit. Uh, my team is really excited about this ad unit. I, I, I'm like kind of skeptical. It's called the uh, conversation ad. So basically, what is it? It's almost like a Drift bot. If you guys know Drift, they've got this like Drift video bot thing. And, you know, it allows you to interact in a more personal way. No, it's like a rep sends something and it's like these little boxes. Like, do you want a demo? Like, I have a feeling it's one of those things that sounds really good on paper. Um, might convert for very low level people. But if you're reaching out to executives, it's probably going to turn some people off. But uh, go check it out. LinkedIn, we're, we'll drop the link in here about this conversion ad unit. I think it's something to probably test. I know we're gonna probably test it here in the next month or so, but I would go I would go peep it. So, all right, so nobody has ever heard of LinkedIn Elevate. Okay, that's great, that's wonderful. Okay, next. Uh, and guys, by the way, usually, let me see what time we're at, 8.40. Yeah, I'm moving along pretty good. So if you guys have some questions from the week, questions on anything I'm running through here, feel free to drop those in the comments as well too. Uh, so this week's hashtag ask Jake anything. This is where if you use the hashtag Ashtake Anything, Shelby or Ali Ray or somebody will scour the internet and they will feature your question on one of these LinkedIn lives. So this week's Ask Jake Anything, and I think I've got two in here. So uh, what are your thoughts around being vulnerable with your frontline teams? For example, you're not sure or uncertain about how to move forward. This is from Jonathan David Garcia. So let's make sure we tag in my man, Jonathan, and make sure that he gets some love for this. I can't, uh, let's see, how is the stream yard looking? All right, good, we're still good. 
All right. So being vulnerable in front of your employees. Um, I think a lot of leaders struggle with this in particular for the simple fact that um, we're brought up to believe that leadership means that you are the rock and that you do this stuff, et cetera, which, which to some extent is true. You know, look, at, when you sign up, this is also an important thing. When you sign up for leadership, okay, I'm gonna, let's just make sure. Can you guys tag Jonathan David Garcia just to make sure that he knows where we answered his question here? Um, so when you sign up for leadership, guys, you kind of signed up, you, you sign up to, to have to tow the company line meaning you're no longer on the front lines. You now are a leader for a company, which means you have a duty to the company, just like you have a duty to your people. And I think people struggle with that, that, you know, you might know something. I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll, I'll actually, I'll get real, real with you guys. So I was at Career Builder in 2008. <clears throat> was it 2008 or nine, eight? Two thousand eight, I was a leader. I ran the Pacific Northwest region for Career Builders uh, Inside Team, and uh, we had to do layoffs, right? And so, you know, look, as a human being, I, I want to go talk to my team about it. Hey, this is, but I can't, I can't, I can't, right? I can't cause k, you know, you know, I can't cause chaos. Like it had to be how it had to be. I had never done a layoff before. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but. I think there, there's different things that you can be vulnerable. Can you be empathetic? Like, look, hey, John, I appreciate it. I get it. I understand what's going down. Yes. But you still have a duty to the company. And that is just part of it, right? That is a part of being in leadership. That's a part of what you're signing up for. So yes, you can be vulnerable for sure. Guys, I've had a tough week all day. Hey, team, look, I need a day to just be free, like to just this. Like much love to everybody, but I'm going to take the week off. So yes, you can be vulnerable like that, but also understand that there will be things that all also you may want to share. You can't, and it's hard, right? So Jonathan, I hope that helps you, my friend. Um, let's see. I got one. I'm going to take one more question here. So since we're, uh, let's see, should people be inter uh, interviewing for new positions be required to submit a skill-based assessment as a part of the hiring process? So I dropped a poll about this last night. Um, pretty mixed. I mean, actually really mixed. Um, there's a little wrinkle we threw in about, you know, if it's, you're switching careers, definitely if you're, you're switching careers, I, look, I'm a fan of skills assessments because, and let me just tell you why, what they do is they help to just tell a little bit more about the person. The big key is like, you don't fully disqualify because of somebody of that. It's just like, you don't disqualify someone because they've had gaps in their resume or they, you know, uh, they got fired once. Or, so you don't qualify or disqualify anyone 100%, but it just gives you more of a story. Sometimes the way, and there's a lot of the talk around this in interview and interview bias, where basically what ends up happening is people tell you the version in their head that they think is the reality, but in reality, maybe it's not reality. And so it's, it's idealistic. It's how they're thinking about things. So if you are out there, if you are... Um, worried about in a skill-based assessment, don't be. And if a company fires or hires only on that, then that's stupid. So we'll drop the link here in the thing. I think I got it. Should I hope we're going to drop it. Maybe we'll drop it. All right. So we'll drop the link. Go take a look at the poll. You guys can check it out. All right. So this week, new segment, I'm going to do a quick story of the week. So this is like maybe a post or an inspiration or something that I did that I thought would be helpful. There was a video that we did um, from, I guess it was what, maybe third Tuesday, maybe Wednesday or Tuesday, where you know there's a lot of stats, guys, around the amount of people and teams that are actually hitting quota, especially outbound teams. And, and this is pre-COVID, pre-COVID, only like 50% of teams were ever even hitting quota. So for for all my leaders out there, or even people on the front lines, it's time to start breaking shit. Stop doing the exact same thing. Stop doing it. People are literally doing the exact same play. They've got 50% of reps hitting quota, and we're making small iterations. Guys, you are not going to get anywhere. If you have 50% of your organization hitting their outbound target, you are not going to get anywhere by writing a better email template and moving this thing here. That's not the problem. The problem is we're not training people how to be creative and how to really understand what buyers care about. 
and we're not really training them how to optimize the technology themselves. Right now, we've moved toward in a lot of sales organizations a command and control environment, right? Command and control is good for setting baselines, et cetera, but then you have to empower, right? So you need to train your team. Dude, here's the baseline. Now go break it. We're at 40, 32% open rates and 4% reply rates. Now go break shit. Go try something new, right? And so check out that link. If we can drop the link for that post, I think people would enjoy that. Uh, I think if, oh, yeah, there it is. See, Ali's got it. I'll drop it in there. All right, Shelby, you'll drop the link for that video in there. All right, and then last but not least, um, we've got, uh, what is it? Uh, on Monday, we've got a upcoming uh, Jake and Friends with a really good buddy of mine, Mateo. Uh, Mateo is one of the best SDR leaders I've ever met in my life. He, well, I met him in New York. We did work with this company and he was running a team of 40 plus SDRs. So Mateo was this super successful, living in Brooklyn, you know, uh, killing it in the kind of sales game in New York. And he quit. He quit. Mateo is a writer by heart. He loves to write. And so imagine this guy. He, and by the way, when he was running 40 person teams, I think Mateo's like 25, <laughs> maybe 26. So imagine that this dude is running a 40 person team in New York, right? Probably one of the biggest SDR teams in New York period. And he quit to go pursue his dream. Now, why am I? Well, one, I love Mateo. Mateo actually came and worked for Scaled for a little bit while he was working on his book. So he wrote a book called Black Buck. We'll talk about Black Buck. We'll talk about why it's so important now and like just how he wrote it before, but how it's even you know much more relevant in the things that are happening now, even though it's relevant to a lot of people in their day to day. I think more people are aware of the issues and I'll let him explain more and more about what the book's about. But, but why I think it's relevant for all of you is it's about storytelling. What made Mateo amazing as a leader that all of you are going to be able to take away from this session on Monday is storytelling. Because that's what you do in a, in a conversation, in an email, in a whatever. I need to tell stories. I need to get you excited. I need to paint to the picture, right? What I used to do is, uh, you know, and again, what I used to close my eyes whenever I would sit there and I'd be on a phone call. I'd close my eyes and I would picture the, like, the picture I'm trying to paint for that other person as opposed to like talking through it, et cetera. Like imagine, John, your team is sitting there, all right? And you've got these three open roles. They're frustrated. They haven't been able to fill them. Now, by what we're discussing, imagine them now having an engineer come inbound to them, if, you know, if I'm selling like a job ad or something. So you paint the picture about it. And, and Mateo's gonna talk a lot about how the skills that he learned in sales um, really helped him now that he's a, a published author. So I'm super, super excited for that. Mateo's like, well, he's just a good dude uh, all around. So I'm very, very excited to share that with all of you. So let's see here. We've got a couple more minutes. Uh, let's see, John Blake. So I appreciate all of you. Make sure, we'll drop the link there. Make sure, if you haven't signed up for Mondays on Jake and Friends, okay, make sure to sign up every Monday, 12 Eastern, like clockwork, right? We, I go live, it's usually, it's either just me talking about a topic, I'll bring in a guest, if I feel like it's something relevant, it's going to add value for you all. Um, but make sure to sign up um, because then you'll get the notifications. We're, we're trying to work it out to where it will be per flawless on both Zoom and uh, and LinkedIn Live. Right now, it's it's probably a little bit better experience if you go and watch it on Zoom. So sign up right there. Um, so my, my advice is go watch it on Zoom. If you don't have it, then it's fine. You can watch it on LinkedIn Live. The audio, we'll, we'll try to work on the audio over the weekend maybe. Um, and you know, again, we're very, very, very excited, uh, you know, for the week and to be able to have this conversation with Mateo. So, all right. So John Blake tossed a question, um, uh, find out, or maybe it's more of a statement, find out what your reps goals are, then train them on new ways to get there. See, that's John. That's everything, man. What John just said here about how you work with your reps is, is, is probably one of the most critical, you know, pieces of leadership advice I can give someone. The other is around, um, letting letting people pick their own adventure about what they want to be coached about. Meaning, uh, you know, I might see someone has a gap around this thing, but if they don't see it, I can't coach them to it. And I can try to coach them and get them to maybe be more aware of it. 
But until they're ready to be coached on X, Y, Z, I can't coach them on it. So if, if, you know, when we're going through a goals meeting and they tell me their goals are X, Y, Z, and I try to ask a few questions about, okay, tell me how you got there. Why is that so important now? What caused that? Um, and they're not seeing this other thing. You can, you can, you can toss it out there, but if in their mind, they're not ready to be coached, then you've got to wait. And I think that's one of the toughest parts sometimes about leadership is like, you know, sometimes you want it more for people than they want it for themselves. And that's always a, a tough, a tough spot. So, so what's up everyone. I hope you have an amazing weekend. I'm going out on a boat again today. I cannot, I'm not going to try to wake, wake surf again. Um, I think I'll try to do it again. I got up for like 0.2, like maybe two seconds. And I literally, I, I might have drank 18 gallons of water. Because the other thing too, if you guys have never done this, you forget to let go of the rope at first. Like when you fall, it's just like your brain isn't quite there. So you kind of just like get pulled and then that's when it gets real bad. So um, I'm going to try to take it easy uh, today. Maybe just a few, maybe a little sun and a little few white claws. We'll see how it goes. So have a great Friday, everyone. Have an amazing uh, weekend. Um, as usual, if you guys need anything, always hit me up. You know, you know, I'm here to answer your questions, help as much as I can. That, my friends, is the weekly recap number 104. I am out.